I wanted to tell you that I was paying attention to what's happening in the world today. And the world is divided. Human beings are so divided today like I've never seen before. And I noticed that it's so easy to divide human beings too. They, they are so quick to take sides. And, and neither side involved them at all. They don't even have the issue. Nothing happened to them, but they'll take sides just like that. I'm listening to all these rallies and things that's going on around the country right now about abortion and about this and about that, and people just fighting one another. And they have nothing to do with them, but they have taken the side from the demons in others, the so-called experts and the so-called leaders said, abortion is bad. Abortion is good. Uh, there is racism. You got to fight for racism. They're fighting over stuff that doesn't even exist. And when you ask, why are you fighting over it? They don't even know why. But they have taken a side. And it is a mess. We are being so, well, not me now, but the government, the experts, the media, and everyone controlled us like not going north. And we don't even know it. We think it's our ideas. We think that's how we believe, and we don't. We don't believe that. I hear white people saying, yeah, racism is this. Well, how do you know? Uh, they can't tell me. Or they'll repeat what somebody else said. They have believed a lie. It's a, I, I interviewed Christians for the Father State. They said, racism is this, well, who is it? Tell me what it is. And they can't tell me what it is. So they'll make up other stuff that they heard. Our battle is a spiritual battle. What you all are talking about today is spirit. It has nothing to do with color, has nothing to do with man or woman, male or female. In God, there is neither male or female. Did you know in truth, there is no male or female? It's just a truth. That's it. It doesn't have a gender. Not at all. It's just plain old truth with no identity. But the world got you divided. And, and I wonder, and I thought about myself too, I reflected, as someone said they do, why is it so easy to divide people? The government could go on the radio and tell you, we need to go to war because so-and-so is about to jump off the bridge. And, and you'll say, and then the media start to repeat it too. Go to war. JoJo about to jump off a bridge. <laughs> and then if half of the group said, no, I want a war. I'm not going to war. I'm not going to let JoJo jump off the bridge. Now this other group, they, they're going to go against you. They're going to be mad at you for saying, no, I don't want to go to no war. Like you don't have a right to say, I don't want to go to war. And why are you affected because I say I don't want a war? It should, that's you. You want the war? Have the war. And I don't have uh, the right to be mad at you because you want a war. You can have the war. I don't care. Right? So he, but that's the devil. That's what he's doing. He's using other people to control us. And he's controlling us on the inside. And I notice that people who can be controlled, they join groups just like that. They're from one side to the other one one side to the other one. They cannot stand alone. Because if they don't drink the, the, the wine, they may be judged by the crowd. And they can't stand being judged. And so I thought of the story I heard. This is not my story. I heard this one, all right? So uh, there was a family that lived in the city, and the city turned bad. They lived in Los Angeles. Los Angeles turned bad. And so the whole family said, you know what, let's go find a place near a, a lake, a river, and so we can get out of the town and we can have a nice, quiet life. The whole family, the dad and the mama, the kids, the cousin, the uncle and aunt, everybody went. And they said, okay, we'll go and find a quiet place. And so they packed up and they went and found a spot near a river. This is not my, I heard this story, it's so fantastic. And so they found this spot near the river. 
and the river was flowing, it was so beautiful, it was so nice. And they were like, finally, peace on earth. They set up shop, they built a home, and they was all happy for a minute. And so one part of the family decided to move to the north end of the river, and one decided to stay uh, on the east end, south end or wherever, because the river, the, you know, the family were growing, baby was being made. And so one day, the one on the north said, you know what, this river is flowing too fast. The water moving too fast because they started to be irritated. Once they left the city, they started to feel irritated within. This was before the guy came up with the idea about the river going too fast. They felt unhappy. All of a sudden, that peace that they had, who was false, it started to leave. And they were like, wow, what's wrong? And the, and the rest of the family started getting irritated at each other. They started not liking one another. And they couldn't figure out why are we feeling this way. We live by the river. There are no crime. No one breaking in the store. We don't have any fitting all around. Why are we feeling why are we feeling conflict? And then they started to try to figure it out. And then that's when the, the person on the north said, the river going too fast. That's why we feel this way. The water is moving too fast. We gotta do something to slow down the water. And so they came up with the idea we got to put a, uh, build a wall between the water to slow it down, right? And then the people on the north side said, no, the water is moving too slow. That's what the problem is. We need to slow, we need to make the river go faster. And then they start arguing about the river because now you split. You have two different opinions. And they started saying, well, how can we stop the river? What can we do? And the experts came up in the family member and they were telling them what to do about the river. We can do this, we can add bricks, we can empty the river, we can do all that, right? And they got in a fight. And then the next thing they did, they held a rally. And they had flags. <laughs> and they had their own, the, the, the ones on the south had their flag. It was red and, and blue. The one on the other end had created a flag. It was gray and yellow. And they start protesting each other. They were like, see who's going to win and get this river to do what it wants to do, right? And they soon realized, you know what? Maybe it's something else. We need to build a White House. We need a president. <laughs> and so they created a president. And the president started directing them in the wrong way to go. But the problem is the conflict got worse. It didn't get better. Everything they did was worse. And then they started to fight one another as though they were living in the big city with where all the mess is. They would fight one another, right? And they never paused for a minute to look at themselves to see where the conflict was coming from, from within. Because what happened was they never went down to the river both ends and saw that the water that was going fast on this end was doing what it does. There was no problem with the water. And the water on this end was going a little slower, but it was natural. It was normal. The river was doing just fine. But they never went to see what was going on. Was it the river? They just assumed that it was. And that's how human beings do with the conflict that is within them. You are divided. You divide it between Right and wrong, love and hate, and both are wrong. You divide it between the past or the future. You divide it, and when you divide it within, you're going to be divided in the world. It's not the world, it's in you. And those people who are keeping you divided by starting a war, doing all this stuff, they don't want you to see that you are divided within because they need you to be divided to you, you, to make money and wealth. Because once you become whole, you cannot be controlled. You can't be used. You only can use a divided person, a person that's looking for love. That's why Satan said, oh, you need to get married. And you go and get married. You need a drink. You go and get drunk. You need a brand new car. You need a house on the hill. You need this because you're divided.
And this is going to make you happy. If you had no unhappiness, you, wouldn't, you could be controlled by that because you would be at perfect peace. And all your needs would be met. You would do your little practical needs, like pay your bills, buy yourself a little house, but you wouldn't be in conflict at all because you would be whole. Anyone that believes there's a past or a future, anyone that believes that tomorrow is going to be better, yesterday was bad, you're divided. You're not whole. Christ came that we might be one. We might be whole again. We're not our thoughts. So instead of looking at the river, because the river is doing its thing, it's fine. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. And the last thing that most people want to do is look, look at themselves. They can't face themselves. It's not the river. It's not racism. It's not sexism. It's not white supremacism. It's not anti-Semitism. It's neither man nor woman. It's the spirit. We are possessed. But the, possess, the one that possessed us has no power. He doesn't have to live in you if you watch yourself, drop the anger, watch yourself. He will have to disappear because he has no, he's been defeated. But he can make you think he has power by giving you fear and worry and all kind of stuff. Your thoughts are your enemy. They are not your friends. And when people try to hurt you, because angry people do things to others to make themselves feel better, right? They ain't, they're not doing it because they love you. They're doing it because they are, are divided as well. They have conflict, and they're trying to make themselves feel better. But if you're not, if you're whole and not divided within yourself, no one can make you feel any kind of way at all. There will be nothing to think about. You will stop fighting with the devil inside of you and outside of you, inside of others. And you're none of the things that you think you are. You're not insecure. You're not shy. You're not worried. You're not a person that has fear. You're not a lesbian. Lesbian. You're not a lesbian. You're not a homosexual. You're not a, a slut. Slut maker. You're not a slut maker. You're not a thing. So stop putting titles on the devil. Because when you put titles there, you identify with the title. You're not your job. You're not a doctor or lawyer. That's just what you do, a practical thing that you do, but that's not who you are. I know doctors that would get mad at you if you don't call them doctor this. They don't want you to call them, hey, Jim, come and cut my heart out and put it back. <laughs> they want you to say, hey, Dr. Jim. I remember one time I testified up in Sacramento at the state house up there, and this black woman was over my district. I forgot her name now. And when she, no, not, not her. It was a no. She retired or gave up. And, <laughs> and I, when I went up to speak, I said to the folks there, I don't agree with anything that this woman is about. I said her name, but I, didn't le I left out Congresswoman, right? I just said her name, whatever it was. She had a fit about the name. I'm, I'm Congress woman this. I'm like, what the? She said nothing about your points. Uh, uh, not about the point. She like, cut off his mic. Cut off his mic. <laughs> she wanted to be called Congress woman. Her ego is on. Yeah. It's all about the ego. You are not your titles. So if, don't you let people call you that. That's not who you are. So you can keep clear that you're dealing with evil. And it's not you. Evil doesn't want you to go forgive your father. It's talking you out of it. Oh, you're going to hurt his feeling. You don't want to make him angry. You know, whatever he does, that's on him. You're going to forgive and God will forgive you. God said, forgive and I will forgive you. He didn't say, go ask for forgiveness. He didn't tell you to worry about their feelings. He didn't tell you that, oh, you're going to make them angry. That's on them. That's their life. It has nothing to do with you. And he would talk you out of forgiveness. Isn't that amazing? And what sense does it make that somebody would get mad at you if you went to them and said, you know what? I've been resenting you. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Why would anybody get mad at that? You're going to apologize for being wrong 
for judging them because you realize they couldn't help it. Why would anyone get mad at you for doing that? But they do. The last thing mama want to hear, you say, I'm sorry for hating you. Mama rather pat herself on the back for screwing you up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you forgive me I did that bad? Yes, mama. Oh, good, baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can have a life right here. You can have perfect peace. And perfect peace is the absence of who you're not. When you get rid of that fake image, you have perfect peace. But you got to get rid of this false image. It's not you. And stop calling it you. And if you're shy and someone call on you to speak, shake your boot and do it anyway. And you'll see it's not you, but never you. All right, let me do this. Did that help a little bit, the story? Yeah. It made sense? Yeah. Oh, amazing story, huh? Mm -hmm. It don't matter. You can move to West Hell, and if you go with one other person, you're going to have a war. You, you'll be in West Hill calling, and you will start a war with that one person, and you're blaming on the river. What a mess, huh? <laughs> All right.